I think what happens with the art world is you see an artist, you like their style and you emulate it. Oh, don't get me wrong. I do that with Sargent, but I'm trying to learn how to make a stroke do what he did. So one day I could use it. I do it too. Sargent's with his friend and uh, his friend said I could have been an Italian count. Sargent just laughs, almost spits his food across the table, says, you're no more of a count than I am, you know, and just teasing him. And, 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 and the reference in my mind is Sargent paints Lord Ribblesdale and it is a powerful painting and it is a silhouette and shape from a hundred yards away. You know, that's Lord Ribblesdale's top hat and coat. So that shape carries symbolic message. That's what shape is. It's when it carries something, you know, a fire hydrant looks a certain way or the Statue of Liberty. It represents something more than just a light and dark block, which is contrast. So Sergeant paints Lord Ribblesdale and his shape and his best friend is saying, oh yeah, I could have been an Italian count. And Sergeant says, no way. Well, Sergeant's method of painting back then would have been to put in the darks first. And he was wearing this dark hat and dark coat and it would have been a shape. He would have looked like Lord Ribblesdale. And Sargent deliberately takes the background and makes areas disappear in the background and loses the shape. And I don't think he ever told his friend what he did. You're no Lord Ribblesteel. Almost like Sargent was laughing and playing with his friend without his friend ever knowing it. Art's about understanding the concepts and the principles and using them when you need them and leaving them on the shelf. That's the hard thing. You see, when I'd spend a lifetime learning to make something look realistic, and the first time I saw a Sargent painting of Mrs. Boyd in Boston in the Museum of Fine Art, and it would blew me away that he's lighter than I am, he's thicker than I am, he has more texture, he uses color and temperature and transparent and thick, and he's doing everything I know, but better. And now the bar was raised and there was a challenge. But what struck me the most was the painting right next to it. The painting that he paints of this street scene in Venice, which doesn't apply, doesn't follow one drawing rule that I teach. Doesn't apply one painting rule that I teach. But boy, is it the classic example of contrast. Well, wait a minute here. So paintings about contrast have to really not have a lot of color in it, but Sargent's best friend's Monet. And Sargent knows as much on color as Monet does. You can see it in his watercolors, they're spectacular. It's one of the great watercolors in the world. So you're telling me one of the greatest colorists left all the color out of the painting, his best friend's Monet, and I had to leave with why. Now, I said earlier, Sargent doesn't talk to me. That's a good thing. My wife's quite relieved. He died in 1925. But he does talk to us. He does it in the painting. Looking at a painting without the hieroglyphics is tough to understand. I think it's my job to explain the hieroglyphics so you can break the painting down so then you can paint your own painting. I'm not gonna tell you how to do a painting. I'm gonna show you the concepts and the principles. Each exercise explains something that you could choose to use in one painting, Monet in color, or not in the next. 